Hey everybody, we back again for another good episode. I think this is episode maybe nine. But I'm gonna have my guy Jamal Robinson on in just a moment. Luke, what up, boss? Yeah, I'm getting this set up right now. Jamal's gonna join me in just a moment. I was tripping, I was on the wrong page a minute ago. Appreciate it too, Nuke. D, what up? All my guys is in here. All right, Coach Jones, one of my guys is in here. Hey y'all, I'm coming in. J Rob is in the building. J Rob is in the building. He'll be on in one second, y'all. You? Oh, what's going down? What's happening, man? Ain't too much. It like you in front of a green screen or something. I mean, <laughs> the green background. <laughs> I'm trying to get my setup right. I'm over here running around. Doing the most as usual. No, I was, I'm trying to figure all that out for the zooms. We do so many zooms. I mean, oh, yeah. get the, you know, you got the, the background, the stadium backgrounds and all that. I'm trying to get yeah. fancy with it. You see, I'm trying to get my background. I just put a little thing up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then I had to, nice. I got the nice. CYBO thing up above that, but I, uh, I'm i going to get it together. I, I turned the little thir a little bedroom into, into in the crib into like a little office. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? My lady let me do it. You know what I'm saying? It took a lot. <laughs> for me to make it happen, but uh, she let me do it or whatever, so we got no. it. Going. It's the what same. Up, how you been, man? I can't. I'm good, man. Just ready to get going, and it was, you know, we need just need to figure this out, figure what's happening. Yeah, it's a lot going on right now. I was. Uh, it's so crazy. Um, first, I'm just going to introduce you. Oh, what's up, uh, Coach Lenny? Lenny is on uh, here too from uh, Norfolk State. That's my guy. All right, all right. Uh, but um. Coach Jones is in too, tapped in. He was one of the first guests early. Okay. And, um, you know what I'm saying? He was my first head coach. You know what I mean? I, I saw him the same way I did with you. I, um, I DM'd him. I don't mm. know why I DM y'all like I don't got y'all phone numbers, but. Uh, you bugging. <laughs> you bugging. I DM'd him and um, he replied just like you did. It was like, yeah, I'm with it. You yeah, know Jonesy, you know, uh, Queens get the money, man. Queens get the money. I forgot. I, I should have known better than say that. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, you know, no. Because you know, Dane said the same thing too when uh when I uh with Dane because I Dane was one of my, Dane was my first guest actually. Right. You know okay. what I mean? And uh, I went to college with Dane for a little while before he bounced. You see, Coach Jones, right? Queens no doubt. get the money. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Um, yo, before I jump into the question, I just give a quick shout out to uh. Um, Coach Shonda Bailey from Hampton High, she always helps me out with, like, she's like a executive producer, really. She uh, helps me out with questions, make sure that I'm not rambling and going crazy. And then, oh, you uh, take, you, you really, this is real. Like, oh, this is real. I'm, dog, it's, it was like, a, um, like three years ago, no boy, me and Mac was like, we was going to do a podcast. And we was going to name it The Good, The Bad, The Ugly of uh, AAU and Summer Basketball, trying to give, like, advice and stuff like that. And, um, we never put it together. We kept always talking about it, and we never did it. So, um, you know, with all this free time at home, I started thinking about doing it um, on little IG live stories or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, a little series on IG. And um, and it went well the first couple of joints. You know, uh, Dane was, like I said, my first guest, and he kind of, you know, helped me with it because, you know, Dane uh, can talk a little bit. So he, yeah, 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 it, yeah. it was easy for me to get into it, and this is something new for me trying to, you know, be on the on in the camera and try to do all this stuff like this. So, so Shauna helps me with questions. Mac helps me. Like he'll be in here just a moment. Like when I start messing up on on information, he's like my encyclopedia. He know it all. Yeah, he do. You know? I, when I first <laughs> met that dude, so I'm like, we were at um, Heritage. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you jumped into that because I got a story for that. But go ahead. Yeah, no. Nah, so I wanted to say something when I saw him the other day. Which mm -hmm. You know, the other day, but um. 
Yeah, I didn't know who was out there, you know, and, and mm-hmm. so he's just sitting next to me. He just starts running them off like, yo, that's da 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 I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know you, son, but I right, you my man mm-hmm. now. But now he knew everything and everybody on the floor. And everybody, he knew everything going on nationwide, every player, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, knew his, he knows what's going on. So that's a crazy story because that's probably when I, I met you personally, too, around that time because mm-hmm. it was uh, the Howard White joint that we did over there yeah, uh, with yeah. Kikaton. Yeah. So, but it's a it's a good story that was going on over there because uh, Ant that plays football at Norfolk State, mm-hmm. he was sitting by us, and Mac was telling me the story again, like uh, bringing it back to me. He was like, "Yo, you asked him how old he was then. I think Ant was only young man. He might he's be a, like he's a young age. fifteen. He was you know young. what I'm saying? So he told you he played basketball and football, and then you went into like a story of how you played ball." You know UVA, then you went to the league for a minute, then you went overseas, and then you just told him like, you know, you gave him some knowledge about just being smart with your decisions, being smart with your money, doing this and doing that, and you can take your sports, whatever you do, basketball or football, you can make it a life, yeah. and not have to work. And you was like, yo, I never worked, I never worked again. You know what I mean? Never and you told him, uh, you told him some stuff like, yo, I didn't go out and buy the biggest chain, I ain't go buy the biggest car, this, this and that. I manage my money. You know, I, I, you did what you had to do to, with your family and everything, and right. everything worked out for you. And I was like, that was an incredible story. You know what I mean? And that's before I really knew you. And I was just eavesdropping, listening to what you was telling them. And I was right. like, you know, real dope. That was a real dope conversation that you yeah. was having with a young, you know, with a young <laughs> black man. That, yeah. that's, that's real impressionable. You know what it's I mean? It's like, crazy seeing him now, man. Like, word. He's grown. Like, he's a grown ass man now. Like, it's, Super it's grown. Crazy. And probably about to graduate college if he yeah. this year I, coming up. I believe, I believe so. Yeah, because yeah, Matt is a senior at Texas and they all like the same age. So he should mm-hmm. be ready to graduate. So that was uh, like a good story that I, you know what I'm saying, that, that we talked about the other day when me and Mac was together. And I was like, yeah, that was dope. And then uh, I posted the flyer on Facebook. And one of my dudes, he's a little, he's about a year or so older than me. And he was like, yo, I remember when he played at UVA, he was crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, it's one of those things where I don't even like talking about that. Because, um, mm-hmm. I, again, I... I just look at everything as I underachieved. I, you know, I had a I had an okay freshman year. I was having fun. Mm-hmm. I was just having fun. I still had my New York in me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I was just going, and um, it was a struggle. Even though, like, even even, even when I was doing, I it was still a struggle because coach, you know, he didn't let me just rock. I was playing behind Jay Willie. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just one of those things where things just worked out in my favor, and I, I had a good tournament. Well, I had a good towards the end of the season, and things mm-hmm. just rolled into the tournament, and I was just, I was just having fun. No, nah, I'm like no bull, dog. I was telling somebody the other day when you was there at UVA, I didn't know you at all. Then I was still in high school myself, playing at Hampton High. And I was like, yo, I was a fan, like real talk. Like I probably never told you this face to face, but I was like, yo, this is part of what the show is too. Is like talking to people that I know and some folks that I don't know about basketball and celebrating them in basketball and getting advice and things of that nature and other yeah. business and all that. But I was like, yo, when Jamal played at UVA, he was one of like, you know, down here at VA, we were kind of slow to the the six 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 seven six five guards putting it on the floor. My my high school center was six four. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like six five. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. When I saw you doing that at UVA, like putting the ball on the floor and just so loose, you reminded me of my point guard. I was like, this is crazy. He's dribbling the ball like my, my, like my point guard dribbles the ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Behind the back, you know what I'm saying? Between the legs, making it happen. So I was like, it was incredible then to meet you, you know what I'm saying, down here in the area. And it was just like, it wasn't nothing. Like you, you didn't act all crazy. You wasn't staying offish. No. It just was like welcoming, and it was just we just went from there, and then ever right. since then it's been a while now since we we've always been cool. Yeah. See you at all these events, see you here, there, EYBL on the yeah. sidelines now, coaching ball. So it's always been a good thing. So um, like I said, I know you already. I know a lot about you already, but um, just give the people a little bit. You know, like I said, Jamal Robinson, UVA. You know, you got transitioned to another job right now, but I just want to talk a little bit about high school, where you were from in New York, and all that type of stuff like that first. Yeah, now, real quick, though. Kiti Habiti. Um, mm-hmm. Nah, so I'm from I'm, – I was actually born in, in San Diego, but I, I never lived there. Like, we – my father was in the military, and we immediately went back to Brooklyn. So I don't, I don't claim that because I never spent any time there. I grew up in New mm-hmm. York. 
you know, New York is all I know. So from South Jamaica, Queens, that's between there and Brooklyn. Both mm -hmm. my parents is from Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, I just went to Monsignor McClancy High School. I did very well through high school. Had a great high school career. Uh, lost in a damn city cha uh, city championship in St. Raymond's. Kareem Reed and them. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it, you know, I chose UVA. And it was one of those things where I should have listened to my mom. <laughs> this is what I tell all the recruits. You, you mm -hmm. guys should really listen to your parents, but especially your mother. Uh, my mom had a, a bad feel, and I didn't pay attention. Right. Uh, and she's like, I don't think you should go there. I don't think there's something that I feel is, is not the place for you. Mm -hmm. So she felt I should have went to Arizona. I had 18 home visits, Coach B. 18? 18. The lowest school was UC Irvine, and that was – Rod Baker, who's now assistant, he's one of the coaches with the Philadelphia 76ers. And the only reason I let him come in is because he was family. He coached me at Riverside Church. I played for the church. Okay. But I had 18. And uh, it was crazy because, like, you know, my neighborhood, it, it you know, back then college basketball was everything. Mm -hmm. I, grew up, I grew up loving UNLV. Mm -hmm. and, um, so um, I'm fast. I'm, I'm speeding through. but That's cool. Know, I um I actually got to the school that I got to through um, one of the assistant coaches that was at Georgia Tech. My uncle mm -hmm. played for Bobby Crimmins at Appalachian State. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we had that connection. That's why I used to go to basketball camp. And when it was time for me to make a, a high school decision, I was steered to Archbishop Malloy, um, where Kenny Anderson, Kenny Smith. But for some reason or other, I didn't want to go there. Or another, I didn't want to go there, so I ended up going to McClancy, which the other, the uh, his assistant, his top ass head assistant went to, and he steered me there. Mm -hmm. From there, Artie Cox took me to Riverside Church, and the rest was history. Uh, I blew up quickly, and it was all really upon how I did at that that ABCD camp, that Nike camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came out of there, I, I did very well, and um, I could have went to pretty much any school that I wanted to, except for maybe I, I don't, I'll never forget. It was Michigan, Duke, Kentucky. And there's one more, um, Michigan, Duke, Kentucky. Anyway, those are only those are pretty much the only four or five schools that I couldn't go to. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I chose UVA. My 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 six came down to uh, Arizona, uh, UVA, Villanova, Florida State, Louisville, and Syracuse. Mm. But uh, I took. How, one, how I did you not get? How Syracuse didn't lock you in? No, nah, they, they tried, and at that time, the assistant coach was Morgan, um, uh, Richard Morgan. Mm -hmm. So I went up there, and um, what's going on, Dej? I went hey. up there, and um, I liked it. It was cool. I saw some of the things that, you know, some of the blessings and, and mm -hmm. you know, but it was just too much snow. And shit. Like, it was, it was you know, it, it's crazy up there with that. The weather is, is bananas freezing. Mm -hmm. And um, it was actually it was pretty much the same distance from NY, so six hours. But I just, you know, so I just went uh, on ahead. I uh, took Villanova, mm -hmm. which it was supposed to be me, she, Wallace, Alvin Williams, Tyron Weeks, and mm. uh, um, what's the name? Uh, what's the name? Lost Jay Lawson um, going there, and it kind of fell apart. Well, actually, for me, it fell apart at the coach's house. At that time, it was it was Lapis. Mm. And he was sitting there telling me that Kerry Kittles wasn't going to play. <laughs> <laughs> what? He told me, you know, that he wasn't one of his kids because he had just got the job. So I was going to oh. be one of his first recruits. So he said that, you know, don't worry about him. He won't play. You know, you'll come in, you'll start. But, uh, right away, me and my father, like, as if he's speaking to us, as if we didn't pay attention to college basketball. Me and my pops just looked at each other. And we knew we canceled them right off. Oh, right, he wasn't telling the truth. No, nah, hell no. Kerry Kills <laughs> went and fucking was Mr. Everything that year. Yeah. He's player of the year, NCAA, MVP. Like, it, it, Kerry was crazy. He was crazy. So, was yeah, we knew off rip it, it was some bullshit. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the main draw was she, because me and him were like brothers. That's, that's mm -hmm. I love him to death. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much spent most of my time with him. You know, shout out to John Haynes, who was my host, but he kept me over at Sheet House. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then I, I didn't take any other ones. Man. My next one was uh, Arizona. I didn't mm -hmm. go, which was a mistake. I didn't go to Louisville after that. I didn't go to Florida State. And then I didn't go back to Syracuse. And that, that coach at that time, Richard Morgan, 
he cursed me out and shit. I had the phone to my father. My father went crazy on that dude. Like, so <laughs> what is wrong with you? Talking to a kid like this. But they were mad because mm-hmm. I, they spent time. They were coming to my games around the city. You know, they were, they were doing their job. Right. I didn't, I didn't, and when I look back on this, like, should I really consider them? Because you're talking post, like, they're, they're alumni, especially, like, in the city. You know, it's, it's, it's deep. Yeah. And as far as the league, you know, of course, Coach Bayhawk, you know, his connection. So yeah. So that was that was dope. Cause so you had a top six back then. So you came out of high school in ninety two or ninety three. Ninety three. Ninety three. It was it was um, you know, it was five. But I I put I put Syracuse. I kept Syracuse. So you could say because we could only have five. But I was only mm-hmm. you know, consider them as well. So you think that nowadays with this uh. You know, social media and everything. I see kids with top ten, top twenty, top twelve. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. How weird is that for you? Like for somebody like myself, like I played ball in high school, but I I didn't get to that level where you were at with playing ball. So for someone like yourself that played and was high level ever since you probably were young, you know, everybody probably knew you was gonna be a high major player. How crazy is it for you to see that type of stuff now? See, but no, nah, it, it was it was different. So like, mm-hmm. we were in the parks and shit. Like it wasn't. It wasn't like it is now. We didn't have all these scout dudes coming around. Like, you know, it, the shit was different. Way different. It was just off of you, you either play with the Chos, the mm-hmm. Gauchos, or you play with Riverside, and mm-hmm. then your shit would blow. Like, mm-hmm. there wasn't a bunch of teams. We didn't have a – we didn't have a – there was no talent scout dudes that just mm-hmm. come with the open runs and shit like I'm seeing now. So, it was just off of when you're playing around the city, people say, you know, that kid's going to be good or – Mm-hmm. Nowhere like it is now. If you you know you had to be in front of Tom Kachowski, Dave Kreider, mm-hmm. uh, what's his name down in the south? Um, what's his name? He, he's the biggest dude in the south. Um, uh, 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 um, I'm um, talking about a, a sports writer. Yeah, what's his name? Who was the? He ran shit down in the south. Um, who Bob Givens? Bob Givens. Mm-hmm. Like you had to be in specific. You know they had to. It wasn't. It wasn't like it is now. No, they had to um, actually come see you or something like that. Or you had to come their way, yeah. Go yeah. their way, yeah. You no know doubt. what I mean? So that's really straight. That's really different nowadays how things is with all of that. You know, I was uh, just watching on YouTube, you know, as far as, like, where I'm getting ready to be up in Philly. And um, they were, like, this dude, they are like, the journalists are in the gym, and these kids are just getting ready to play pickup. And they shout these kids' names out, like, oh, this is going to be the next star. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's crazy now. It's, it's definitely crazy. It's a different it's a Appreciate different you, yay. Yeah, you see, uh, you see KP in here too. KP's a good dude too. You know, I know you know. Yeah, KP. yeah, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, I know you know KP, so I only got to go into that. But so, like, let's talk about a little bit, uh, because I'm 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 from your era, but I'm just a, about a year or two younger. But it's New York City basketball, like, so when I was coming through, right, you couldn't tell me there was a better player than Allen I was and than Chuck. So you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I was stuck on that. You know what I'm saying? When I went to college, when I went to HU. Um, my, my my neighbor was my, uh, my barber too. He was from New York, you know. Okay. He was from Queens. Okay. okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? So he was like, "Yo, New York City, da 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 da." And he could hoop too, so that made it even worse. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he could play. I used to always talk about Bub or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, how was New York City basketball in the '90s? It was crazy. Everybody, everybody shouts out and acknowledges Felipe Lopez, but. The mm-hmm. city was was crazy. My team was crazy. You know, as far as pros, I, I think I may have been, I may have been the only one. No, me and Charles Jones. Charles Jones. He used to be with New York Lightning for a minute, didn't he? No, nah, he's. I think he's still with with Shannon. I'm like Shannon. Was, Sh- Shannon was our, my point guard. CJ was was like you know the two. They, they he was a bucket crazy. too. Oh no, he CJ was crazy, was- <laughs> crazy. Like, and the only problem with him, I believe. Is that he just didn't keep his mouth shut? Like son would mm-hmm. let everybody know in the building, I'm about to bust your ass. Mm-hmm. And while he's doing it, he's he's telling them like. Mm-hmm. He was, but um, the city was crazy, man. Like, and you talk about park ball. It wasn't all about just being in gyms. It was all over. Like, it was an amazing time. Um, yeah. Like I, I the first time I played Chuck, we we were down to BT Classic in DC. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, we getting ready to play. It was Team Virginia. Or mm-hmm. like that. And we were like, well, we're going to bust these country niggas' asses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I'll never forget it. I stole the ball, and I'm I'm going fast, and I take off. And I, I noticed he was, this motherfucker running with me. 
It was him and Damon Baker. Mm-hmm. Oh. So they both running. I don't I don't know these motherfuckers. So they both running. I go to take off and both of them jump. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't believe them niggas was up there. Yeah. I thought that shit on the back iron. I was so I was I, Bing! Like, because they were smaller than you, you probably couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe, but I've never seen somebody with a basketball that fast before. As mm-hmm. far as AI, like when I left there, and all of us left there, we was like, "Yo, that that motherfucker, he." Mm-hmm. So fast forward, I ended up seeing him at Nike camp. Mm-hmm. He was young, but young. He, he was on Rasheed. Uh, he was on Rasheed Wallace's team. But that same Kevin time, Dur- yo, Kevin Durant was Kevin Garnett was on that team. Ray LaFrance was on that team. Uh, I got a I got a VHS uh, a VHSL. No 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 no. Them niggas wasn't there. This is my oh. class. Oh, that's he was there with us. Yeah, that's so he yeah. was like in the ninth grade. That, he was yeah. he was young, son. Like yeah, and he was acting wild, but he could mm-hmm. back it up with his play. Like off mm-hmm. you know off the court, this nigga acting wild. But mm-hmm. you had a young you know you had young Steph Marbury who mm-hmm. he <laughs> he was with us, but we had to move that nigga off our team. Me and my other man. He, mm-hmm. he, uh, shout out to Selden Jefferson, but um, AI, son, he was. We knew he was gonna be crazy. Like, yeah, I had never seen a nigga that fast with the rock. So you must be talking about like the year, probably a year after me. Like, it was, he was the year the that he got in trouble. It was the year that, that he that got was, in trouble. That was that was after. That was after. Mm-hmm. Cause when he, he got ran in trouble. Shit. Yeah, yeah, no, he ran shit. He he uh, that's when they were flying him back and forth. Yeah, you know oh what I'm saying? Wow. To go to court. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To go to court. And I got that game on tape. It was like uh. The dude, what's my man? He went to Kentucky. He's uh, Ron Mercer mm-hmm. was up there when uh, Rafe LaFrance was there. Garnett was there. Ronnie Fields from Chicago was there. Antoine Walker. Antoine Walker was there. Like, I got that on a VHSL, uh, like, I mean, VHS tape. You know nice. what I'm saying? Because my older brother used to coach at Bethel, which okay. was in school. And my aunt coached at Bethel for, like, 30 years or whatever. So. Nice, son. That Nike, Nike camp was real. Like, that shit was, it was amazing. That's and that was I, Indianapolis back then, right? Yeah, IUPUI. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's when I it, it really opened my eyes. Like I know we we had been playing and stuff like that, but I wasn't I wasn't aware of everybody. Like mm-hmm. this shit was real. Because I'm that's saying that's where like, I took off from. Yeah, because you named all those guys that was from New York City, so you probably wasn't thinking about really tripping off no guys from. Anywhere. Well, we still we with the church with the church. For example, like when I was 15, we mm-hmm. were over in France. Mm-hmm. Like, we're playing against grown ass men over in France. Like uh, our coach would take us over to France, so we we were pretty. We played in Slam and Jam in summer, which was in mm. LA. Then we played in BCI and Phoenix. Those were the two larger joints where you see. But um, now we had been moving, but I had never seen so much talent in one. He talking like, you know, why, looking at, I had never seen Jock Vaughn. Like mm. this nigga had on a tie dye <laughs> bandana around his head, and I'm like, is this? Fuck is this? No, I'm, I'm, I was major New York. Like, fuck is going on with this dude? Like, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, he he could go. I think it was nice. Like, and this is where I started to see the hierarchy and how things right. work. But I didn't give a fuck about none of that. I just wanted to hope. Like, it was. I'm from New York. I can fuck with these dudes. Like, right. Yeah. So, and I had to go. With it. It's crazy because my 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 host or my counselors was Junior Burrow. Hmm. Gary, uh, I mean Grant Hill, Irvin Johnson, Jawan Howard, mm. um, and I maintained like you know contact with them. Like of course, me and June, I ended up going to UVA, but uh, it, mm. it was especially was a blessing. Man. Like, and this is where like what I saw as far as the UIBL, and it's kind of fat. Like the kids are, are, have been given so much, they don't even love that shit. Like we used to sit in the hallway and just talk to each other about our neighborhood and shit. Like right. Now these niggas finish games. Excuse my language. These these fellas, these cats finish games. They put the headphones on and it's a wrap. Man. It's just it's a wrap. Yeah. You know we didn't have all that. Mm-hmm. And then they gotta be, you gotta get ready. Somebody's about to interview them probably after every uh, game. Yo, that bugged me. Up. The first time I saw that Barry, I was like, what the? Fuck? <laughs> is this dude running on the court to talk yeah. to the high school? What up, five? But is is this dude really? Is this? It's different worlds, honey. Yeah, my first time going to EYBL, we I wasn't we wasn't we wasn't even qualified. I went to play in the uh Peach State, another drink, because mm-hmm. I was coaching like a B team at that time. Right. So I went over the, to the EYBL because you know Van was there and um I had talked to Van. I was like, yo, I need a pass, I need you to get me in, blase blase, whatever. So he got me in and I was just amazed. Like, yo, this is crazy. Like yeah. I, I watched it. 
you know what I'm saying? I heard about it before I get start getting involved heavily with, with Boo and all of that. And I was just like so amazed how it was and the theatrics of the of Nike and how they put on, like no doubt. They, you know what I'm saying? It, it's like a different type of level of putting on for uh, for an event. And it's like, that joint is like a week long, too. So it's like every yeah. single day, you know what I'm saying? The college coaches are running past you. They rapping to you. They stopping and talking oh, to you. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's nuts, yo. Like, so I was like super amazed about all of that. So, like I said, when I first saw you playing the ACC, you know, playing with UVA and all that, I just no bull, dog. I was telling Mac the other day. I was like, yo, when he was putting the ball on the floor, and like wrapping it behind his back, between the legs, hands yeah. up, going through. I was like, that shit is amazing. Like, you got me going crazy right now. Like, I was like, yo, that shit was amazing to me, yo. No bullshit. You know I'm not saying? even. It was. I used to spend hours in front of my building dribbling the ball. Like, mm -hmm. that's what, you know, when I talk to these kids, or I, you don't need to be in a gym. You don't even necessarily need to be on a court, like in a park. I mean, if you can get there, of course, it's better. But I spent so much time. I wanted to be – I wanted to handle the ball better than Kenny Anderson. I wanted to be Kenny Anderson. Mm. So getting low, pounding. Like, you had to pound it. You know, you're on the concrete. Like, it was just – Sort of come back. Yeah. Well, no, nah, son, this shit was – it was <laughs> it was just hours of me sitting there talking to whomever came by, you know, was coming in the building, just dribbling the ball. And and then, of course, you know, my, my mother or father needed something from the – you know, we have deli, little deli stores, the corner stores. Mm -hmm. You know, we call them deli mows. If, if they needed something from deli mows, I'm, I'm handling the rock to deli mows. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the bag. I, I know I need to work on my left hand. I'm taking up the bag, putting it in my right hand, and I'm handling the ball with my left hand. Like, mm -hmm. But it wasn't nothing. I love that shit. Like, see, what people don't understand, for example, when I, when I say I underachieved or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, when people look at stats and look at – they're looking for these for points and shit. That's not what the fuck I was about. Mm -hmm. I love playing the game. I loved assists. I love handling the ball. I love mm -hmm. I love you know, I didn't I didn't learn how to play half court offense until after college, man. Like mm. that was not something that we you know, my, my high school coach taught me. It wasn't really something I thought jump shooting and shit like that was boring. Mm -hmm. I fuck that. Let me make somebody let me cross somebody up, let me boogie real quick and go dunk or it wasn't even about dunking. It took me a minute to dunk the ball because I love finger rolling that shit. Laying that thing. Oh, yeah. crazy. Clapping board. Boom. Yeah. Like, so and it got to the point where they was like, yo, son, dunk the fucking ball. What do you keep? Mm -hmm. What do you keep finger? But I love finger roll. I love mm -hmm. like, But I love the style and the feel of the game, man. It wasn't mm -hmm. about scoring no fucking points. Like, like people, oh, you ain't scoring nothing. No. I won games. And right. If you watch me play. You're gonna see some shit like yo, that that thing was nice. Like, nah, it was just the way I played the game. I, mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't come in hunting points. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't really learn about that shit until honestly. Well, two two brothers that played an instant part and me playing, they were they them niggas hunting points. Like, one of them was known as 40, 40 P, <laughs> like, he, what he did. So it killed it. It, dro it drove him crazy. But that shit didn't. It wasn't about a bunch of points for me, man. It's about winning the game. And style, like, I just love style. Like, I mean, it looked like you was having fun, though. That's when we're at our best. And that's what happened. So after my freshman year, I ain't having no more fun. So that shit was. Dave, what up, boss? I got to follow you, too, because he, Dave's joint. He does a, he puts love a lot him. of He's a good brother. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. He's a good brother. He put a he's lot a of brother. old school stuff on his uh, on his IG. And no, no, he's a good brother. Who and all that old stuff, yo. Like, so Shout out to Dave. Cool. No question. Mm -hmm. No question. But um, so, no, nah, it wasn't. I just love love it, like you know, embarrassing somebody. It's just like I remember uh, golf, golf. Uh, what's the name? Golf of uh, Five Star. Mm. He barked on me because, like, one it was coming down, and I, I, I think I won two. This kid, and he fell, and I stood there and was looking at him like. <laughs> so he called. He stopped the game. You know, it's his shit. So golf. Mm -hmm. stopped. He started barking on me. Like, the fuck do you think this is? All this east to west. He just went crazy on me, like right mm -hmm. in the middle of the court, like you know, north to south. But he just barked at me, and I was like, you know, I, I listened, of course. And mm -hmm. especially as I got older, I understood it's not about that side to side shit. But that's just the mm -hmm. way I love to play, man. Like I just, I was a ball handler. I loved it. Yo, I love. I was talking. So my my young guy that does my edits and everything for me for the program and for the. uh for uh for my show and everything so i was looking up old pictures of you and stuff like that and it was so many pictures with your you know shoulders like 
I'm like, oh, like the one I used, I was like, oh, this is perfect. I can tell yeah. you about to hit somebody with something. And then it's like a lot of pictures when you Google it, a lot of on the backboard and laying up mm -hmm. right over the rim, like you said, the finger roll, like mm -hmm. you, you you love, you know what I'm saying? I can tell you like the finger roll, like the with it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was very, and it's crazy now. It's like, I, now it's kill. Fuck all that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just, it is what it is. Just kill. Like, don't play with them. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you never lose. You just learn. And mm -hmm. just, but, you know, again, when people look at that, they're like, oh, that nigga, nah, son. That ain't, don't mm -hmm. look at that. That shit's not doing me justice. But it is. So, like, I, I tell everybody that I have up here, I jump around all over the place. We start. Nah, it's so yo, good. You know what I'm saying? I start with your old school, then I go to now, and then I go back. So, since you touched Chuck. on that part of it, right? <clears throat> How does it, you know what I'm saying? Because what I, when I first met you, you was heavy, heavy, heavy in player development. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Which I'm sure you still are. So how is that, you know what I mean? Because like you said, when you played as a teenager and probably through college, you like the you know, wiggle, you like going yeah. east or oh, west. Oh, no, no question. No question. Like, so it's just, it's just from all the, the years of playing and understanding, okay, you can still do that, you know, but it's got to be – Something get him out of the way, and there's no space. Attack immediately. So, if you boogie and he sl he slides right, you right immediately. Eat that space. It's it's just again. You can look at a Kimball Walker. Mm -hmm. You know somebody like him who likes to boogie, and he he's pretty efficient with it. Ain't a lot of extra shit. You know, mm -hmm. but, um, it's just about being efficient. And if you're gonna do that, you know. Yeah, we were just talking about that the other day, Max. And you talking about angles and getting screens. And all that—that that was all through training and stuff, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? How, showing kids how to use angles and coming off the screens the proper way and stuff it's like even, that. It's even—it's—it's crazy. It's—it's it's even before the actual shit happens. Depending on whether or not you're coming, let's say if you're coming down and you're getting ready to use some type of ball screen action, something like that, you should already have a picture of where guys are and what, what's mm -hmm. getting ready to happen. It shouldn't be—I mean, of course, you want once you're coming off to read as well. But mm -hmm. the, the the ones that are special, they already read that shit before it's getting ready to happen. They already see where the defense is, where the you know mm -hmm. where they're playing and stuff like that, and how they pick that apart. Yeah, Kendall oh, Bynum wow. was in here too. He said you was you was his best trainer he ever worked with. He was one of my favorite point guards I ever coached too. Oh, I appreciate that, son. Yeah, yeah he was one of my favorite point guards that I coached because he can he could get off that um ball screen and get downhill, mm -hmm. and he was super fast. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. he was getting people involved and all of that stuff like that too. No, so, it was it was just love, like how I even fell into all that shit. Again, I'm sitting next to Mac, and at that time, I don't even know if I was doing that shit then. It was just one of the things where I loved the game. I was just happy mm -hmm. to go catch one of them tournaments. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, it's crazy. So again, when I saw him the other day, I didn't get a chance to say it to him. I was just gonna be like, "Yo, Mac, isn't this shit crazy? I'm coaching." <laughs> <laughs> Word, like, yeah. But I kind of thought, you know, what I'm saying, from seeing you when I started seeing you in around, around the way and in the seven five or whatever, I was like, you, you know, what I'm saying, before I knew you personally, I always was thinking about uh, yep, yep, Max. UVA. You know, oh yeah, because he just joined a minute ago. But everything that I um, always thought about, I always thought about UVA. You know what I'm saying? And then as growing up in the Blue Wins program, I knew about Gauchos and Riverside. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying, I got pictures of like Tony. Playing against uh, Skip and Malu and Chuck playing against Skip and Malu and stuff like that from way yeah. back then, you know what I mean. So I always Skip knew. Skip was the first. That was the first cat I ever played with. We were babies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I'm maybe a year older than him, but he was the first dude. This dude Clarence, he had us all in the car, a bunch of kids in his car, mm -hmm. real five park. No, you know what's so crazy though? All of these stories are the same because I remember being a young dude, like playing ten and under. You know what I'm saying in the program. And being in the car, being like a ball boy. So I remember, like, my dude's father used to coach us. And next thing you know, he had a big old van. He's going to pick up Ed Gath, Joe Smith. You know what I'm saying? You know, look at the names you drop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know they were going to be what they were. You know, Mike Evans, this one. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was so many, like, really good players back then that, you know what I'm saying, that I was blessed to be around. Tony's dad, Tony Rutland's father. Used to train us as little kids. Damon Bako's dad used to train us as little kids. You know what I mean? Like, I knew they were going to be great. There was yeah. no doubt in my mind. Dog, I remember working out with them, and I was like, I know I don't love it like them. Because we're going to work. It's like 5.36 in the morning on Saturdays, dog. His dad is coming to get us. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Like, yo, why do we got to work out at – what's the difference between working out at 6 a.m. and at 12 noon? I just – 
didn't understand it as, as as a little kid. Like, you know what I'm man, saying? Man. That's love, man. That's mm -hmm. love. He used to run us, take us to the uh, track. And you know what I'm saying? We would hit the gym late. You know what I mean? We'd be out there on the track from like 6 to like 7 a.m. You know what I mean? Then we'd get into the gym and get started on stuff like that. So I knew Tony and Damon and all of them were going to be great. And then my man moved down here from New York, um, uh, Jamel Gray, that played at Hampton High, with, uh, and Omari Gray. They were from uh, Long Island. And they came down with the both of them were number twelve. They came down with the Kenny Anderson stuff. Yeah. They wasn't even left handed dog, but they kept the ball on their left hand the whole time. Son, Chibs was Chibs was Chibs was everything. Yeah, I see every, a lot of New York people used to love Kenny. So see, but hold on real quick though. There was somebody who did like we had the boy uh Dave Edwards. Mm. Uh, and he, you know, Coach Jonesy, he, he can he can attest to this because he's from right he's from our hood, like Mm -hmm. Kenny's apparently from our hood too. I didn't even know that until later mm -hmm. on. I always attached him to Left Rack City, but Dave Edwards, who you know, sleep in peace, passed due to you know this whole this stuff that's going on. Yeah, now. but uh, he was he was a problem too. Like he was a problem. Like he's a person nah. you've ever seen. Like Boogie and this motherfucker threw it through the cat's legs he, and threw it right back through. Like I had mm -hmm. never seen. Or you know, he put on a show. Oh yeah, I knew he was really good because I started seeing a lot of uh, a lot of his, you know, when he did pass, I seen a lot of people talking about him. You know, what I'm Say saying. Say it again, Jonesy. Say it again. <laughs> Hood legend, the truth. No, no, he was crazy. He was crazy. Yeah, so like, um, just a little bit, like when you was at UC, I mean, you saying that you underachieved in college is weird. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, when I saw you in college, I don't know what was going on because you know I wasn't there, but. It was a and, yo, that shit, it, it was crazy. There was so much. It, it, but you was an all-ACC player and all that in the ACC, though. That was all in my freshman year. Mm. Like, from then, like, when I came back, you know, mm. I had a little bit of hype. Dickie V talking about us. We feeling good. Mm -hmm. And um, Corey Alexander came back. Woo. First game, he took 26 shots. <laughs> my other point guard, Haroldine, took, like, 24 shots. Junior Burrow took six shots. Ooh. I took four shots. And that was pretty much how the my, rest of my career went. Like, And it wasn't – I'm not going to say it's because of C. It's just there were so many things. And, uh, you know, some of it was my fault too because I was, you know, I, I love the ladies. Right. You know, and I, I was – I wasn't – I was up often very late. Mm -hmm. But um, I started – you know, I started receiving things a little early, you know, some good handshakes. Like, it, it was love. It was, it was mm -hmm. love around. And um, it, it just – it got so bad for me that uh, I ended up having to see a psychiatrist. Because mm. what I loved more than anything in this world was going wrong. And I, mm. I didn't know how to fix it. Mm. And I got mental, son. And once you lose your confidence, it's over. Oh, it's a, it's a wrap. Yeah, no, nah, we got these big, thick-ass blankets with the V on them. Mm -hmm. I took that shit and put it over the window. I was in that bitch. Excuse me. I was in there mm -hmm. like a fix. Son, I was in this. I was hurting, man. Word. I, I went through it. Yeah, nah. It, I went through it. Like it. It was bad. It was real bad. And that's just pretty much how you know. I had I had games here and there, mm -hmm. but it was never anything consistent. And yeah, I didn't have to do much. Like it, it was. I can remember vividly, like watching UVA and AC, because you know we. This is being in Virginia. This is ACC country. You know what I'm saying? So I remember a lot of games being on ACC, and I can remember, like, commentators talking about stuff like that with you. You know, you know, Jamal Robinson, he's doing it as well. Yeah. 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 yeah you called me an enigma. enigma. Yeah, no, nah, it was – I was so – I was so messed up here. I, I didn't even have – I just didn't have the same killer that I had when I first came in. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. think it was a big culture shock for me going from New York City to Charlottesville? No. <laughs> I wanted that though. It was, it was crazy. I wanted that. Like I was tired of getting up in the morning and having to deal with the train and motherfuckers pushing you and just rude people. Like mm -hmm. you know, New York can bring you down. So though I love it, like mm -hmm. I love it one hundred percent. But I wanted that different feel. And when I took mm. my visit, you know, it was nothing but beautiful people. Mm -hmm. and you had the countryside and all that shit that I didn't grow up with. I wanted that, and I wanted a real college atmosphere. I didn't want the, like, an Ohio State or something like that where you're in the city and people. You're in the there. city, yeah. UVA was 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 it. Everything is UVA. You know? Definitely. My older you know, brother's a professor there uh, at UVA. Oh, okay, he teaches, uh, he's actually uh, teaches, like, 
I don't even know how to say it, but he teaches people how to, to get their doctorate. He has his doctorate and all that. So the people that he's teaching already have masters and all that. So I go to UVA quite often because um, my older brother and my nephews live in Charlottesville and stuff like that. Well, they're grown now. My nephew's all but Yeah, it's, it's totally different now. Totally, it, it is, but damn, it's crowded. So I'm like, it's super crowded. It's totally different, but. You remember a few years ago when they had the incidents with the tiki's and all that? Mm -hmm. It's still sort of the same, you know. Oh no, no, that was I, that was see, and that's what before. So when I made that choice, people were saying like, "You understand what you where you going?" And I was like, "Because mm -hmm. hey, we didn't know." Again, we've been trained, and we're not gonna take it there, but mm -hmm. we were led to believe that all these people were great people in our lives, mm -hmm. and had our interests, and you know, I didn't, but I didn't see any of that. I actually saw it when I years removed. And we went back to a circus to lay. You know, I took my, my daughters there, uh, the family up there. And that's when I kind of seen the snobbish. Because it was like UVA, a bunch of snobs, racist motherfuckers. Like, I didn't know mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson. And it's crazy. We went to that house. Mm -hmm. And they even walked us through his slave quarter. But what? Like, oh, hell yeah. You take that. Yeah, the, the, uh, you go on the, uh, the little tour. Uh-huh. Oh, so let me take you through all that shit. But I wasn't thinking about I didn't put, like... Thomas Jefferson, like, I, you know, we were young. We didn't think about that. Now right. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's crazy. It's a, it's a whole lot of different, you know what I'm saying, different things now as you get older and you look back on stuff and you start understanding that. Like, I didn't yeah. know about all that either. Like, it's schools in Hampton, where I'm from, that was na named after Confederate people. You know, Some. they changed Jefferson Davis Middle School. They changed the name of it. I forgot to what, but it used to be an elementary school right up the block from me named Robert E. Lee. You know, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? And we just in there, like, they take the picture, like, these you know, every, these people are amazing. And nah, we've been lied to our whole fucking life. Right, but exactly. You know. you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's crazy. So, like I said, I hop around a little bit. So, with you, with the, uh, you know, at HU, I talked to, um, like I told you, I talked to Mark Gonwin the other day, and he was just telling me about, you know, your his first encounter with you when you were training Marquise. And I get a lot of stories like this about you in the training, uh, you know, format or whatever. Caesar Turan, exactly, Coach. Um, but um, he would just say how he watched you train Marquise one day, right? He said, you never asked him for a dime. But he said that wasn't even the biggest part of it. He said, after y'all got done training, however long y'all were training, it was like an hour or some change or whatever. Because I like your style. You was like, you get in, get to work, and get out. You don't want to be in there all day two, three hours, shooting three million shots for no reason. But he said you talked to him for like 30 minutes after the workout, 35 minutes after the workouts Man, about I, life. I actually pissed a lot of them off. I'm not going to say pissed a lot of them off. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like even when I got on with Hampton, my thing is trying to get them to understand, you know, through, I can only talk to them through experience and, you know, it, it's just talking to them, period. Mm -hmm. First getting them to to understand where I'm coming from and stuff like that. So when I'm on Hampton, those guys, some of those guys didn't want to hear that shit. They think that mm -hmm. I'm just talking. And all I'm doing is trying to, you know, put them on game and what's going mm -hmm. on. And with him, it was like, clearly you could see the trigger was crazy. Mm -hmm. right, so, and I don't remember exactly what he spoke about, but it was about, you know, just him preparing, being prepared. Like him, you know, not only before you come into this workout, like, uh, you know, when you get up in the morning, what you should be, and stuff, just everything. Mm -hmm. I talk to, I try to talk, like, when I'm doing that stuff, it's more than just the physical. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to do with the mental. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've just carried on. So, like, you know, this new position I'm in, I'll do the same. I'm not mm -hmm. going to uh, bombard them or anything like that. i got to get them to trust me and understand that I'm coming from a good place. Because it, it's all about them. It's not about us. So It's about these guys being prepared for what's next. And that's the thing. Thing. You know, real life, as we as we all know, B, is real. And yeah. these guys, you know, they're not experiencing that right now. Somebody's placing, uh, you know, a, a roof over their heads, mm -hmm. taking care of their meals, dressing them and stuff, you know. They don't understand, like, shit's about to get real. So when this college, it, it, it's it's on you. Quickly. Quickly. So it's just, you know, I, I, I with Keith, I saw, you know, regardless, each one of them, whomever comes in there, I see potential. And I just, I try to, you know, I do my job. My job is to try to just talk to them about life and mm -hmm. everything. And how they so, can, you know, get better. With that, right, like we were talking about before, like you told me. Rob, what up? You told me before, like, you used to find, like, the wrong stuff all the time as a young player yourself, you know what I mean? Possibly getting into trouble a little bit, things of that nature. So does it frustrate you, you know what I'm saying? Because you came from New York City, 
you could hoop. You was crazy as shit with the ball. You know what I'm saying? You went to the you went to ACC, you know, Power Five conference, play ball, and then you you know you're training kids, or you were training kids, and then you you know started working. Does it frustrate you when you try to give them that? Like, dog, I did what you did. You know what I'm saying? I was I was I was slight a slight asshole when I was your age too, right. but I still but you still made it through. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So now they can it, look at you. But does it frustrate you when they don't want to hear it? It's it's not even so much that because you know. In the beginning, definitely. I've been mm -hmm. doing it now for a couple of years, so I, I pretty much get it. You, you just you, you find out quickly who's open to and who's not. But at the same time, you know, when they do something wrong, I don't give a fuck what it is or who they are. I'm going to say something and mm -hmm. try to correct them. Whether or not they listen, that's on them. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it, it's, it's, it's just one of those things where it comes with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I've learned to, to uh, you know, not, not take it personal. Mm. Just you know, just it's, I'm still going to speak. I'm still going to say something. I feel it's my job. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I, I would I would be angry angry with myself because you know it, it's our job. It's everybody. even if they don't, you know, just as long as you're telling them something that's positive or mm -hmm. that could help them. But nah, it, it it isn't even about what I did or what they do. Nah, it's see me for what I am. I'm trying to help you. Mm. I don't want shit. I like that. I like I'm that. just trying to help you. And like that's part that. of the problem. They have so many people that are trying to do or receive from them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't need anything. And that's one of the first things I'll tell them. I don't need anything from you. I don't need anything. I'm good. I'm right. just trying to help you. Mm -hmm. that's all. And that's the part I'm working on, as you said before, not not taking things personal. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Bree. Yeah, that, I, I, that's what I was saying. When I was saying, mm, when she said that, I was, that's what I was Respect talking Respect is key. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, Especially if somebody has your best interest at heart. And that's all I have. That's all mm -hmm. I ever have. That's the reason I got into it. Like, I didn't want to get into the, and I think I may have already talked to you, told you this, but I, I didn't want to get into um, the whole training thing because you see these cats out here hustling. Yeah. Using that. And that's not what it was about. I saw that what I could provide could be, you know, <laughs> out this, out, out, at least our way could be. Uh, you know, it, it could help. So then I decided to go ahead and get in. Yeah, like like Mike said, I take everything personal. And I ain't going to front. Like, that's part of what I'm trying to figure out as being a coach and being in the position that I'm kind of in now with. Be taking you everything know, personal. I do. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I can't even hold you. Like, <laughs> Mike's been coaching with me ever since I started coaching. You know what I'm saying? So he know for sure. Like, me and him talk every single day for hours. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I Look do. Look out, T.I. I, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to front. Like, you know, when I'm doing something for kids, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm doing it for them because it's like you said, I don't get a gain out of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm 40 years old. You know what I'm saying? Try, try, try calling, like, try calling these dudes. Like, oh. and you you can feel it. Well, you, you do. You do. Yes. And, <laughs> you just, you get a feel for the phone call. You have some that are engaging and some that just, you know, kind of, and you just, you know, it's your job. But I try, I, I've gotten better. When mm -hmm. I first started doing this, oh, it, it was ugly. I would bring mm -hmm. it home. I'd be in the car, coming here and be ready to rip shit up, and mm -hmm. and it was it's just you know over time I picked it up. I'm surprised you haven't you ain't good right now. So you still act you still aggy? Yeah, man, I get aggy. I can't hold. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I I don't do a lot of lying. You know what I'm saying? So I do get mad. Like I had a coach tell me that they did an in home visit with a kid, and the kid came downstairs and the wife beat a do rag. Like I know they're at home. But still, like, Son. you know what I'm Son. saying? I just get so frustrated, like, with stuff but like that's that. Where I guess. That's, that's where, again, I mean, I, I guess you wouldn't be connected to that kid or whatever. But that's where, so even mm -hmm. with my last position, I, so when we would get into certain, you know, road trips and stuff like that, a lot of them would, would lay low and stay in the lobby. And I would just mm -hmm. come down. And it would end up into a discussion about life and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it wasn't, don't wear a do-rag. My first question was, do you understand where that comes from? No, they don't. They don't. They just see it. So I explained to them. And I was just like, you know, the bigger picture, you know, if you if that's what you want to do, I get it. We all want spinners. We all, but do that in the privacy of your home. Mm -hmm. Don't be out in an airport with it and all this. You know, just, just trying to explain to them. It, it is what it is. It mm -hmm. ain't no hiding. That's a negative look mm -hmm. in terms of, of people with power or people who will one day pay you or Yep. So I had a lot of those discussions, but that's 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 for me. That's home training. Word. 
You probably Especially like in that type of setting. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't even get into my visits, but I'll tell you one real quick. I was already upset. I had just got home. I was in the park hooping, and it's, again, this is my fault. I had so many goddamn home visits. <laughs> so my dad comes and gets me out the park. So I'm pouting and I'm angry. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, get your ass upstairs. We you mm-hmm. set this up. This is what you did. Right. So I had to get in the shower and stuff like that. So it's Providence coming in. Rick Bond. Rick Bond. <laughs> so how we do it, we would all sit on the couch against the wall and we'd set the chairs up across the table. So it's us and them. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I was a little tired and I, I fell asleep on him. I fell asleep on the on the visit mm. while he's there. He's talking to me. All mm. I know is my father smacked the shit out of me. Like, I'm up. <laughs> and he mm. walked me right there. He said, this is your fault. This is what you want. You better, you know, ever disrespect. And it, but that's a, that, that was a lesson. Mm-hmm. That was a lesson. Word and up. Of course, that never happened again. Word. But it, it, it was crazy that, you know, that even happened. But again, it, it was a lesson. And, um, you know, I, I was fortunate. To, I had two amazing parents. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. When they left, I got that belt, though, son. Yeah. I got that leather strap when they, when they yeah, left. Yeah, I went through that, too. I, I'm from, like I said, you, you may be a, like a year or so older, but, you know, I am I came through that 90s mm-hmm. in that early 80s. My mom's was like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? She was a plan. It was her by herself, and it was five of us. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? So, yeah. Okay. That's real. So, yeah, so she was she wasn't having it. Like I remember being snatched off the basketball team in middle school because my grades wasn't right and this this mm-hmm. and that. So I go to my aunt crib because my mom used to have to work at night. It's a quick mm-hmm. story. So I used to go to my aunt's crib that coast or whatever. She knew I couldn't go to the game that I was. My mom had took me off the team. Right. So I guess this was their little plan or whatever to see if I was going to tell the truth. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> my aunt took me to the gym anyway because I told her that my mom said it was okay. Dog, it was the worst day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the worst day of my life. Because my mom used to work till like 11.30 min- to like 11.30 to like almost midnight. You know what I'm saying? Right. She worked two jobs. But, you know, our game, middle school game is normally like around 7, 7.30. I'm like, boom, my coach going to take me back home. I'm going to be home well before anybody, get, before my mother gets home or whatever, whatever. I go into the joint, you know what I'm saying? I guess she's already in there, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the oh, bathroom, yeah. getting changed. Oh. I go in the, I'm one of the better players on the team, so, you know, I'm, I'm hype. I'm dancing, doing my thing. Yo, as soon as I go into the gym to, like, do our little run around the court, yo, she just dropped out of the sky like a like an <laughs> alien on me, dog, like, right in front of me. It was the worst day of my life, still to this day. Like, the worst, besides, like, my sister passing away back in the day, yeah. As a childhood thing, that was probably the worst thing that ever happened to me, yo. It was yeah. like in front of all my dudes. My little brother was there. You know what I'm saying? I had to wear that at school the next day, too. Like, mm-hmm. she didn't, like, beat me, but she went upside my head in front of everybody. Yeah. My coach was yeah. there, like, with his mouth wide open, didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, ain't nothing y'all can do. This is it. I just ran to the car. I was like, I ain't going to go through it no more. I'm just going <laughs> to run to the car. We'll handle it when we get home. You know right. what I'm saying? So... That the parents and the structure, like I said, my mom did it by herself, but she wasn't like a pushover or nothing like that. Like I couldn't get over on it and yeah, do what sound, I wanted to do. It sounds like she assumed both roles. Word, she yeah. did. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then we had a lot of help with my my aunts and stuff like that because I come from a, a, a basketball family. You know what I mean? Okay. Like my aunts coached, and you know what I'm saying. My mother played in high school and stuff like that. So it kind of got introduced to me. Early. I always tell people, even I told Jones and all my other guests, like my first. Yeah, I learned a big lesson right there for sure. <laughs> My first big, uh, like, basketball role models were women. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to go to my aunt's basketball practices and sit in there as an elementary school kid and just, just look at her practice for, like, hours at a time with her girls at Bethel. And then my mom's played. I used to see pictures. My grandfather used to show me old pictures of my mom. Right. Yeah, Converse. Wow. I got pictures of my mom in, in her basketball stuff with her, with her Chuck Taylors on and all that. She That's played love. so long ago, dog. They, when she went to college, it just went to women being able to play uh, full court. When she played in high school, it was half court, dog. What? Where she tells me all types of wild stuff. Like, basketball was half court for women because it was like – like, my mom was born in 45, so mm-hmm. back then it was still going through all the craziness or whatever, and she was from down south, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So she's like, yeah, ba- women basketball, at one time it was four women on the court, you know what I'm saying? Then it Damn. went to five, 
then it went to uh it was half court, then it went to full court probably a little bit later on. She said after she graduated, and then you know, and then my aunts played. My other aunt was like created the uh the it's a CIAA symbol. She was like a um a swimming instructor. She was one of the on the board for the CIAA for back in the day for black women. So everything was sports for me because my dad wasn't around a lot, but I heard he played basketball or football. But everything for sports when I was little was all women, you know what I mean? Like yeah. It was all women for me. So, like I said, I, I jump around a little bit. It is, it's it's good, good that we're doing this because I ain't really asking you no questions that I had. We just rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and this is this is ideal how I want it to be. Like to be you honest, want, with you, you like, want it to be like natural. No yeah, doubt. you know what I'm saying. Um, so I use the questions like as borderline stuff, like in case I do get thrown off a little bit. But you know, after you when you did play, you played professionally a little bit. Like I said, I touched on that story that you told Ann about that. You know how you were able to use basketball for life, and you still oh, using basketball for life. Inside, inside, even when shit was going wrong, I knew I was gonna get to the NBA. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It was, I don't, I don't know. I, I just knew it. Like, you know, I just knew it. From watching my father, like I was again, I was in the dorm room with my dad when he was in college, Denison University. Mm -hmm. And there are pictures of me chasing that basketball during his games, like running on to the court. Mm -hmm. Um again, like your family, my family, everybody hooped. I just mm -hmm. knew I was gonna get there. Um mm -hmm. so when I first when I come out of UVA and it was pretty much off of what I did my freshman year, um, mm -hmm. you know, I had three teams that were interested. I didn't uh so I did I had three pre draft workouts. Mm -hmm. And um I did I did good. But they were uh, what it came down to was with the Trailblazers, they were gonna take whoever well they already knew they were gonna draft Kelvin Cato with their first pick. I remember but him. they wanna they were gonna draft they had ten of us at the their workout and they were gonna take the one who did the best second round. Word? That's how and that went? Yeah. So and you go into was, that knowing that. You went into that workout knowing that. that that's, yeah, that's yeah. Now my agent, my agent was telling me, kept me up on all that. But um, And they took Alvin Williams. Mm. Villanova will play with the Raptors. Villanova, yeah. Yeah. And, um, but they, I got the call right when the draft finished that I'll be flying out to Portland like that next that next day or day after or something like that. And I, I had an amazing summer league. And then I broke mm. my ankle. Damn. Damn. was there. Corey was there, uh, and it was it wasn't in the first leg. First leg was L.A., which was crazy. Mm -hmm. our first that's the first time I played against Kobe, and he was only that was his second year out. But fuck that, I played against Kobe. Word. Um, so and I did good. I did alright. Um, and then uh, once we finished L.A., we we finished we won the whole we won that, and we were the only mm -hmm. team to beat that Laker team and stuff like that. And that's when I I first saw Jermaine O'Neal. Mm. Jesus Christ. Straight out of high school. Oh, son, he was a problem. Mm -hmm. Like, he he had been sitting on that bench because they were so deep. Sabone, mm -hmm. Wallace, Gary Trent, uh, uh, Brian Grant. So, but that summer league, the shit he was doing, I knew he was, as soon as he broke away from them, and that's when Indiana and all that shit happened shortly mm -hmm. after, I knew he was going to be a star. Mm. So, we went to Utah in the Rainbow Classic. And it's crazy because first couple games, I'm doing really well. I'm getting ready. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it, but I, they were getting ready to – I was going to sign my rookie deal. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my rookie deal. Um, so I, I happened to go to the game with our – one of our all-time greats, Dr. J, and I'm sitting next mm -hmm. to him. So we're talking, we're watching a game, and the, the dude at that time who was tough at, from Colorado, Donnie, Donnie Boyce, he goes down. A, a dude runs underneath him. It's right before the half. The shit, this shit's mm -hmm. freakish. Right before the half, he goes down, and he had on a pair of low tops though. And he, I think he broke his ankle or he fucked it up pretty bad where he couldn't play anymore. So we're sitting there like, wow, because you know you got everybody running on the court and they picking him up in the stretcher and all this shit. Mm -hmm. So me, me, I'm sitting with Dr. J, and he's like, man, that's crazy. It's so sad because this is his opportunity to show himself, and this is what happens. And I'm like, yeah, that is bad. So you know whatever. I'm, I'm over like, I'm fucking sitting next to Dr. J. Oh my god. Right. <laughs> Not really tripping off Donnie, you know, Brian right. Cole. <laughs> but, so, and I'm just like, you know, you're right. Uh, the next day, the same shit happened to me. Mm. It was the cat that, uh, Mahmoud, I've got his, he was, he played with Michigan, ended up transferring the cat. Anyway, he was a, the Orlando draft pick. And, uh, 
it was just before halftime getting ready. When I'm getting ready, I'm getting a catch, getting ready to shoot, and this motherfucker runs underneath, and I come down on his foot. That's crazy. But it was just crazy. Yeah, we were just talking about that shit the day before. Maybe I should have been paying attention more Word. to Donnie instead of Doc J. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo. You know, so, so I don't mean to cut you off. It's going gonna, it's gonna to end this in 10 seconds, and I'm going to come okay. right back. Give me, like, right, two man. minutes, and I'm going to come right back so I can pin all your stuff back up. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right back. We'll be right back, y'all.